was like the most dramatic thing internship at Google. Just really not my cup of tea. Snapchat fired 10% of their workforce. So the golden handcuffs are real. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be telling you all about how I became a software engineer. I'm going to be talking about college, talking about my internships, and talking about job interview process. You can use the timestamps below to skip to various portions. And also, disclaimer that this is just my experience. There's many ways to become a software engineer. There's many things you could do with my degree. I just thought I'd share with you my journey. There's definitely some tea being spilled, some juicy parts. So yeah, stay tuned. Also, along with that, I am not bragging about anything. Later on, I'll be talking a little bit about my internships and we all know with big tech comes amazing perks so I'll be mentioning those just to kind of give you the full picture but I'm not bragging and this isn't something that's unattainable I went through a very traditional route I also don't work at a big tech company with amazing perks anymore so there's that USC class of 2019, I majored in computer science. Early into my computer science education, I decided that I was going to finish my four years at school and then enter the industry as a full-time software engineer. College is definitely a time for exploration, so you don't need to have that figured out your first year or your first semester or whatever. But I personally just knew that that's what I was going to do. I come from an immigrant family. And I don't have the luxury of having my parents uh, provide for me or like pay for my apartment or anything, so I knew I wanted to finish school get a job, build my savings, and you know, get my footing in the world, and then explore from there. So knowing that, I curated my college experience to make sure that I was in the best possible position to land that job. I'll walk through some of the important things that I think are key in a college career if you're trying to do something similar as to what I did. But again, disclaimers everywhere that this isn't the only path. I think the biggest factors can be broken down into three categories. Academics, you obviously need to do well in school and be a knowledgeable engineer. So that goes without saying you involve that side of school, whether that be in student organizations or working on your own projects, just making sure you apply computer science somewhere outside of your school projects. Third, having internships or having some real world experience. Those were the three things that I focused on to make sure that I was set for job interview process later on. I'll break down some of these student orgs and the internships that I did. So the first thing was I was an undergraduate TA. This gives you the opportunity to be an undergraduate TA in courses you've already taken and passed. So every semester, except for my very first semester, I was a TA. This was a nice way to make some money and also learn more things because I would hold office hours for the students that were currently taking the class and I would have to explain concepts that I should already know to the other people and I learn a lot that way. So that was a really great experience for me. A lot of interviewers are really interested in that because it just shows that you're able to grasp concepts and have the communication skills and leadership skills to help other people. Next up are two actual student organizations. So one is called Code the Change. We basically partnered with nonprofit organizations in the LA area. We would help build out some technical system that they needed for their nonprofit, but they hadn't built yet because they can't afford to hire actual developers. So we would build it for them for free. And then the last org is called Athena Hacks. My friends and I organized the first ever all-female hackathon at USC. We organized it for three years successfully and now it's still going and being run by the girls who are still in school. Now moving on to my internships. This is where all the tea is spilled. I did internships every summer and then I also did two internships during the semester which is kind of crazy but I'll explain later on. My first summer out of college it was really hard to land an internship but I ended up getting one at MITRE which is this big government company and they do government contracting. It was my first internship and I learned a lot about government work in general. It is very process heavy. It is quite slow for my liking. It's just really not my cup of tea. So my second year I managed to land an internship at Google. I was so excited. I couldn't believe it. This was my first intro into big tech and I was just super excited to see what working at such a big company and such a successful company would be like. I was so excited you don't even know. In terms of technical experience, you don't get the opportunity to make a ton of impact, especially as an intern. They give you a pretty succinct project because intern managers are required to have your intern project scoped out for you. The possibility for impact is very limited at Google, so I didn't like that, but my mentors were great and I had an amazing summer. Of course, there's the perks. The golden handcuffs are real. I worked in the Bay Area office in Mountain View. That's their headquarters. They literally own the whole city, basically, and then some, but like there's literally anything you can imagine there. I don't know where to begin. There's free food, obviously. There's so many restaurants. Any given day, you can choose to have 
pho, you can choose to have a gourmet burger, you can choose to have great Mexican food, you can choose to have sushi, like these are all options that are available for you every day, which is insane to think about. So that's why the Google 15 is really real, you gain 15 pounds when you intern there, because you're just like, what the heck? There's free snacks, there's, there's so many gyms, there's so many fitness classes, spin classes, hit classes, anything you can imagine. There's like a lap pool, there's volleyball courts, there's bowling alley, there's free haircuts, there's dry cleaning, there's free massages. Literally, I could go on, I could make an entire maybe 30 minute video just listing all the crazy things that Google has available for you in their offices. You could legitimately live your entire life in their offices, which is kind of insane to think about. And that's just goes to show you how much money these big tech companies have and make. But to top it all off, my team specifically was split half in Mountain View and half in New York City. So every summer apparently my team gets together either in Mountain View or New York City and they switch off every year. This summer it was meant to be in New York City. So I thought they were just gonna leave me as an intern behind, but they were like, no, you're coming. So I got to fly out all expense paid to the New York City office, like hotel and everything paid for me. Work from there for a week, meet the other half of my team and have a great time there. The Google New York City office is insane. It is so amazing. I fell in love with it. I fell in love with it so much actually that I, at the end of my internship, I got a return offer and I asked them to go to the New York City office. So the next summer, I returned for another internship with, on a different team at the New York City office. So I'm just like a normal girl from Florida. I didn't know any of this existed. You see like the movies and you hear things, but it really doesn't click until you're at work and you're like, oh, I can choose to go have like an amazing burger or I can choose, I can just have all these things for free. Like they even gave me a free bike. I, I just, I think it's just insane the things that they have at Google. But anyway, moving on from the perks and focusing on the things that actually matter. So I, like I said, I signed to go back the next summer. So this is my junior year summer and technically this is your last summer before you go into senior year and you basically interview for full-time offers and you get to decide. I panicked. I was like, oh shoot, I'm gonna have to go into senior year with only having experience at Google and at MITRE. No, I love Google, but how can I say I won't love a smaller company? So my my second semester junior year I decided to not only do classes full-time but also do an internship full-time which was an insane move on my end I would not recommend it I was exhausted that semester I interned at snapchat or snap and I basically woke up at 6 30 or 7 a.m. took the train from downtown LA all the way down to Santa Monica and then I would take a bird scooter from Santa Monica to Venice which is where my office was located on the boardwalk by the beach it was really cute I'll probably insert some clips if I have them I would then work from 8 a.m. to like 5 p.m. I would then do the same commute back to campus and then I would go to class after work and then I would go home and like pass out. It was such a tiring experience overall. I had a great time in terms of my project. I worked on Bitmoji suggestions for replies. I made this feature where if you get a Bitmoji in Snapchat chat, it would automatically generate possible emojis you should reply with in response to that emoji. You get to see that at a smaller company, you definitely have more impact. So that was pretty much the extent of my good experience at Snapchat. Then there's a lot of things I didn't like. I never felt like I belonged at the company and this was mainly because I was in a small office with just my team and there's about like eight of us and my entire team spoke Mandarin and I did not speak Mandarin. They were all super sweet and we all had great relationships but there was definitely a lot of times when they communicate with each other in Mandarin and because of course that's their mother tongue they're probably more comfortable with it so I totally understand but you definitely feel a little bit left out when everyone's laughing at something in Mandarin and you're not you're not really included or they would have to explain to me after what it was so there was that disconnect with me and my team I just didn't feel like I really belonged there and then the real tea is in the middle of my internship snapchat fired 10% of their workforce this was 300 people it was like the most dramatic thing because no one really knew about it and one day we all show up and there's like a few empty desks everywhere and you're just like what the heck so then we have this huge meeting where the director of engineering explains everything and the culture just died right there just imagine showing up to work where your very close friend who has a family got fired they don't have a job anymore so that really destroyed the culture but it taught me a really important lesson and that lesson is that you just need to make sure that the company you're looking to work for has great leadership snap black this at this point I don't know if it I'm sure it's gotten better or it's improved overall and I'm sure they're doing better now. This was back in 2018. 
I didn't like Snapchat for that reason. I really didn't like their leadership. I didn't like their structure. And maybe they've changed since then, but I didn't want to go back there. And then as soon as my internship and my semester ended in May, I flew to New York to start my internship at Google. So it's my second internship at Google. And this time I was in the New York City office, which I, again, I said is insane. Basically all the same perks, but in the middle of the city. I lived right next to my office in Chelsea and the whole area is wonderful. I just had the best time. I loved my team. I worked on Google Sheets. It was a much more youthful crowd compared to the Google Mountain View office, which has a lot of folks that already have families and are more settled down. But again, I didn't like how limited my impact was just because the my team was also limited in general in what they owned and what they did. I didn't like that about Google, but everything else was amazing. The end of that internship, so I was a junior and I was going to graduate next year. Either get a return offer, sometimes you have to interview again and maybe get a return offer in a, depending on the interview, or you just get a flat out no. I ended up getting a return offer. My team loved me. It was a great time and I think I did pretty well in my internship. I can definitely make another video about how to excel at your internship. But yeah, so I ended up getting a return offer, which I was really excited about because this meant that I went into my senior year and my job recruiting process with an offer in hand already. Even though I already had my Google offer, I still interviewed at a bunch of places. One of the companies that I ended up interviewing for called DeepMind, they're a separate entity inside of Alphabet, which is Google's parent company. You have to apply to them and interview separately. It's a lot smaller than Google. The projects were a lot more interesting. They work on applying machine learning to a lot of causes that I'm personally passionate about. So I figured I'd apply. I ended up having to go back to the Bay Area to interview with DeepMind and I ended up getting an offer there as well. That worked for me. It was a smaller company. I still had all the perks that Google had. So that seemed like the dream world for me. So I ended up accepting that offer sometime in November. I got hit up on LinkedIn by this company called Honey, which was based in LA. They reached out to me asking if I'd be interested in doing an internship the following semester. Reflecting back on my Snapchat experience, I was like, heck no, I don't want to do another internship while going to school. But this was different because they allowed me to do part-time internship instead of full-time at Snapchat. And I didn't have that many classes left to take my senior year. I decided to do the internship. Keep in mind, this entire time, I already had my DeepMind offer signed and sealed. I was going to return there in August. So going into Honey, I was like, oh, this is just for fun. They were okay. I was very transparent with my recruiter at Honey. They were still okay with me interning. So I started my internship at Honey, and I honestly didn't think I was going to like it that much. But wow, I really loved it. Honey was about 300 to 400 people, so it wasn't super tiny, but it was a lot smaller than Google or Snapchat. Chats. I love the culture, which is really nice. Everyone's super sweet. Um, I love that it was in LA. I love their product. Their leadership was amazing. Yeah, I had the most amazing time. I saw how much impact you could make at a company that's a lot smaller. So at this point, I don't remember how many engineers exactly, but I think it was less than 200, maybe even around 120. So at the end of my internship, they actually made me a full-time offer and just really confused and conflicted at this point because in my head, I couldn't go back on a contract that I already signed. After talking about it with some of my friends, I decided to actually renege on my deep mind offer and go to honey instead and you're probably thinking like what the heck why would you do that that's not cool at all like this company is going to blacklist you but let me explain when a company hires you and you start working at that company they're pouring so much time and effort into training you hiring you uh, setting up all your benefits and what a company really wants when you join them is for you to stay there as long as possible so knowing that I wasn't gonna be happy at Google and I definitely would probably be leaving within a year or two I decided to be very transparent with my recruiter. So I called my DeepMind recruiter and he was so receptive to it. He completely understood and I think he was relieved that I saved him the time of having a bad hire basically because I wasn't going to be happy and I would end up leaving and they would have wasted resources on me. Obviously I'm not recommending that you sign all your offers for every company you get an offer from and you choose to renege on all of them. That's not okay. I think it, it just depends on your situation but obviously be mindful of it. I'm not recommending reneging if that isn't necessary, you know? After all that, that leads me to where I am today. I live in Los Angeles. I work at Honey. That's kind of my entire process and journey, and that's all I've got for you today. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and I'll catch you in the next one.